there and welcome to art from the cottage. Um, so I've got a nice square canvas here and I painted it in very patchy um, blue. And I've used cerulean blue and ultramarine blue and white and I've deliberately made it a little bit patchy, lighter areas and darker areas. And so now I'm, just a second. So um, today I'm going to be using cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, black, uh, raw umber, burnt umber, burnt sienna, cream and white. Those are the colours that I'm using today. And at the moment, I'm just going to put on some of a creamy yellow and I've mixed that using uh, some raw sienna and some yellow and some white. So I'm just going to put that, a band of that here and I'm going to keep it so that it's unlevel, uneven. I don't want it to, to sort of blend into that blue there. Now I'm going to, this is going to be a very simple sky today and there's a reason for that because I want it to be all about the foreground in this painting. I've got one layer, I may do another layer. So I'm just starting to put in some trees in the far distance against that creamy yellow. Um, and if you decide that, you know, they're a little bit dark, you can always just dab them with a damp paper towel or go over them with a very, very light wash of um, white or cream or something. Um, but at the moment, we'll, we'll just put them in first and then decide what we're going to do. I'm just putting in um, a hedgerow, what to represent a hedgerow, in the in the, the front of the trees, and this I've done with a darker uh, brown. Uh, usually, I usually use um, a, a dark brown, like um, burnt umber with black, or something like that. And again, you can always go over it. You know, you get the you get the bones of the painting in first. And then you adjust it as you go. So I'm dabbing out some of the colour in these in these trees at the background because they were a little bit dark. And um, the further away that something is from you the paler it gets. So they are going to be a lot paler than the trees that I'm going to put in in the foreground. And I'm putting in, um, you know, some snow in the, in the foreground because I like to see, uh, give myself an idea on how this painting is going to look. So working on the um, foreground, I'm putting in the snow, or what's going to be the snow, and it all helps me to sort of envisage what this painting is going to be like. Um, you know, I could have left it blue, but that's not going to help me, um, you know, to, to, to sort of envisage what it looks like. So I'm putting on the white now, and I'm doing it with a palette knife, and I'm making it quite thick, um, and I, but I still want some of that blue underneath, and I'm going to need that blue later, and I'll show you. I'll show you later. Um, so I'm doing this for texture. It's like in pasto, um, and it's going to be very thick, and it's going to take a while to dry. So we'll just get this on and then I'll get it nice and dry for you.
So the painting is nice and dry, and I'm starting to put in my first tree. Um, I'm just deciding where it's going to go and getting a feel for that. So I'm just going to do that and put in a little bit of a um, few branches and things. Uh, and I want to make that foreground look like a, a sort of slight hill. And I'm going to just have some bits and pieces of grasses exposed and things like that. So I'm just working on this now, on these trees. And you can see what I'm doing. I'm using a very fine brush and I'm sort of, um, you hold the end of it. You don't want it to be too controlled. And you just hold the end so that you've got very little control and put in your branches. And then you can adjust it as you go. And obviously you, you're gonna need the, uh, where the branch joins the another branch or the trunk, it's going to be thicker. So you need to do all that. My advice is don't put in too many, especially, well, even if you're doing a tree in summer, don't put in too many branches. Just put in a few because you can put in uh, some, you know, some leaves and things like that. You can fill it in a bit. Um, but anyway, you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit and uh, put some branches in off camera. So I've put in a few branches and I'm now using a sponge and I'm using a raw sienna, um, very, you know, watery mixture uh, to put in a few brand, a few leaves that are dead leaves that are left over from the autumn. And um, I'm looking at the tree and I'm not really liking it. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that out. You see me taking it out. And I'm going to make two trees there. So I've taken out a section of the branch and I'm going to come in and make a, a separate tree trunk there. And so that I've got two trees. I just didn't like the confirmation of that tree. It just didn't look right. If you look at that branch there, it's sweeping over to the right and there's nothing else you know it looked really weird although we do have a lot of trees like that in Cornwall that are windswept so they're sort of swept to one side but anyway I'm going to put that in as you can see okay so I'm liking that a lot better I think you'll agree. Look at that. That is so much better. And um, I'm just trying to get some sort of little bits and pieces of marks um, at the base of the trees and things. Yeah, I think it might that that tree on the right. Um, best thing to do is get um, a pencil or something or um, a, a paintbrush and hold it up against it and look. I've put in another branch and that looks so, it's balanced. It's got, the, it's balanced the tree altogether. So I'm happy with that, happy camper. So much better than how I had it before. And this is an absolutely brilliant exercise for, for you beginner painters to, you know, you don't just put in a branch and think that's it, that branch is going to stay there. You can take it out and take, I took half the tree out put a whole new tree in um, and it looks so much better and that's what you can do as well and that, this is why I like doing these these um, videos because it's especially for beginners it's giving you more confidence knowing that what you can do so I'm just putting in here some dirty marks um, shadowy marks uh, they're not going to stay like that. I'm going to change them slightly. I'm going to put uh, some snow over them. And I'm just putting in the remnants of a track. And it looks as if the farmer or somebody has come down the hill, because uh, that's going to look like a hill by the time I've finished. And they've come down the hill uh, in their tractor, 
and left some dirty marks underneath. And now I'm working on the, uh, you know, the foreground in front of the trees. And I put in a couple of old fence posts, which I usually do in my, uh, in my landscapes. They've got to have some fence posts. Um, and I'm just putting in some sort of um, marks to make it look like it's a hill, a slight hill uh, coming down from that top field there. It's slightly coming down. I'll put in a few marks. It's not going to stay like that. I'll, you know, change those as I go. But it just to give me um, an idea on where I'm going, basically. And uh, I like that. It's, it's looking all right at the moment. Again, I'm just working on that um, little track area that I want to look like a, tra a track. And um, I put a little bit of blue in that as well. And I'm sort of scraping away to, um, you know, let that under... You see how that underpainting is showing there? You can see that on the right-hand side of the painting about halfway up. Um, I've left the paint thin. The white paint is thin, so it's showing the blue underneath, and that always gives you the indication of um, snow. So I'm putting in another tree here, and it's set back slightly from the trees on the left, and it's going to be smaller, and it's going to be a little bit paler because it's set back. Um, and what I did, when I finished this painting, I have to admit, I'll tell you a secret. When I finished the painting, I realized that there were two and two, and that is not good. It's, you need an odd number, really, when, if you're doing uh, boats or trees or anything, rocks or anything at all that you put into a painting. Really, it's not set in stone, but really it does look better if you have an odd number in there. And I know I've got those fence posts, which sort of gives me an odd, you know, well, no, it gives me an even number, really. But anyway, so what I did was, when I realised this, when I looked at the painting, I decided to pop in another one, and you'll, a small one, and you'll see that where on my thumbnail and I'll also show it at the end of the video. So sneaky me, eh? So I'm still working on these trees, putting just a few branches, try and keep it down to a minimum. And um I'll get my sponge again and put some remnants of um leaves that are just about to fall off the tree. And that's what I do, and I put a bit of dirty snow at the bottom of the um, of these trees. And obviously, when you do the fine, uh, you know, branches and twigs and things, you need a, a paler colour, and you need it. You need to um, sort of dab the paintbrush onto a towel or something to get the excess off, so that you've got a very pale, wispy look to the um, to the twigs that are coming off the branches of the tree. And you also need to make the, I've got some money paint there. You also need to make the um, the base of the tree a little bit wider, you know, a little bit wider than uh, the rest of it. Usually, even if it's a thin tree, you need to 
make it a bit uh, wider. So, a tip here. If you look at the paint you're painting and you think, ooh, it's dark and, um, you know, it's got, got no body really, it's, it's all dark. Don't worry about it. All you have to do is get a paper towel, damp paper towel, and just dab over. You know, in this case here, I would dab over the uh, trees in the background. Just dab, I've already done it once, but you know, you could do it again. And dab over the big trees and maybe the fence posts. Um, yeah, that's what you could do. And just keep dabbing it. And some of that paint will come off onto the paper towel and it'll, it'll be subtle. And it'll be, um, I think you like it better anyway. So that's probably what I'll do at the end of the painting. Because I'm feeling it's a little bit dark, those trees, but hey, we'll see. I, I used a pencil to put in um, some wire that connects the, um, you know, the fence posts. And I always find that if you do that, it's a lot, you know, more, it's better, subtle. Uh, you could, you know, you don't want to put a line of, you can't find the brush thin enough to do a line of paint there. Um, so use a pencil for things like that. Um, let's have a look. So I'm just putting in, I'm getting my palette knife and I'm just putting in some bits and pieces of, of snow that's, you know, sort of caught on the trees and caught on the uh, foreground and on the, you know, that kind of thing on the branches. So that's what I'm doing there. Put a little tiny bit of um, the impression of a um, fence uh, along the back of that um, hedgerow, uh, uh, right in the background there, just a, little, a few, just with my palette knife. Just put a little bit of white to represent a fence and I just ran through it with my fingernail. You don't put a line, you don't paint it, you know, with a, with, with a, a, a brush or anything. You just use fingernail. And I'm just putting in some bits of, just tiny hint of snow in the trees, the top of the trees. It's barely discernible. It's, you don't want to make it obvious like that. <laughs> Take it out. You don't want to make it obvious. You just want a hint of, of snow. So I'm at the end of the painting now, and I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you have a go at it. And um, it would make, if you did this painting, you were happy with it. It would make a lovely um, Christmas card for next year. You could, you know, you could do that. So I'll say bye for now. But before I go, I would say it would be wonderful if you would subscribe to my channel. And it would be nice if you gave me a thumbs up as well. Because that's how, that helps the YouTube algorithm to put the video out to more people. And with that, I'll say... Thank you so much for watching and um, as always, love from Cornwall.